Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on March the 11th, we commemorate the life of Saint Sophronius, Patriarch of Jerusalem. One of the lesser known heresies that cropped up to pose a mild yet ominous threat to accepted church dogma was the theory of monothelitism, and the church's suppression of this heresy was the handiwork primarily of a man known as Sophronius, a patriarch of Jerusalem in the 7th century, against whose eloquent logic no voice of monothelitism was any match. It may seem trivial by comparison with the iconoclastic movement which ravaged the church for 150 years, but its theory nevertheless was an affront to God that could have had disastrous consequences without the forceful opposition of St. Sophronius. Quite simply, the doctrine of monothelitism held that Christ had one will, not two, which was in contrast to the traditional concept of the Lord's having two wills, one divine and the other human, inasmuch as he was both human and divine. Surprisingly, a number of well-respected theologians were swayed to this view, and their short-sightedness may have spread except for the compelling reasoning of the Jerusalem prelate. Sophronius was born to a Christian couple named Plethys and Mary, whose circumstances were such that they provided more than adequately for the educational and spiritual needs of their son. More fortunate than most, the boy grew to maturity with the gnawing feeling that there was something lacking in his life, and he felt that the void could only be filled by an approach to God through the medium of asceticism, and to that end he gave up all social and economic ties to take up monasticism. Sophronius was enrolled in a monastery in Egypt there to encounter a monk named John, for whom he developed a deep personal attachment in acquiring from him the benefit of his prolonged experience as a monk and tutor. An authority on dogmatic theology, John imparted to Sophronius the wisdom which was to stand him in good stead in his service to Jesus Christ, and in due course the student was to excel the teacher. The extent of the knowledge of both these pious monks was encyclopedic, and they delighted in testing each other, with John usually yielding to his superior friend. After Sophronius had taken up his successful stand against monothelitism, a posture which brought him wide recognition, he was given the post of Archbishop of Jerusalem, a prestigious office in which he gave full expression to his piety and wisdom. In the year 638, the Persian hordes of King Uram overran the Holy Land, terrorizing the people and removing all authority except one, that of Patriarch Sophronius, who refused to be intimidated by the infidels. Not wishing to stir up an insurrection, they retreated from the holy ground of the Patriarchate. The invaders did surround the city, however, forbidding travel in or out of the limits. But when Sophronius heard news of the death of John the Merciful, Patriarch of Alexandria, he went through the guard post without incident and continued to Alexandria, where he delivered a stirring eulogy for his longtime friend, John. He returned to the Holy City again, passing through the barricades without incident, because not even the wretched Persians dared to approach this holy and resolute man of God. In the ensuing months of siege, Sophronius ventured out into the crowd city daily, offering his blessing to those who were needlessly oppressed and bolstering the flagging, the flagging spirits of those whose hopes were growing faint. Even the enemy came to respect this awesome prelate as he exhorted the populace to continue their work 
as though the enemies of Christianity did not exist, and his inspirational leadership brought heart to the long-suffering people, who found within themselves the capacity to bear burdens they had never anticipated. For as long as he remained patriarch, the spiritual business of the entire community went on interrupt uninterrupted, and the social order remained intact. While all this was going on, Sophronius found time to express himself in writing, thereby creating some of the finest works in ecclesiastical history, particularly the books that touched on exegetics. He also produced the quite marvelous biography, Mary of Egypt, among his many outstanding writings. He died peacefully in Jerusalem on the year 669, March the 11th. Through the prayers of Saint Sophronius, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us.